My husband and I have not been to the movies together since February 2020. That's like three and a half years. That's a yeah, long time. Yeah. We watch a ton of movies. We have like all the streamers and we see everything. But getting him, he's one of those people that that didn't mind the COVID lockdowns because he's already a solitary man of the forest. But getting him back out afterward has been really difficult. But I, I lured him out of the house. I was like, listen, let's go see Oppenheimer. We'll have a date night at the movies. And that perked him right up. Oh, we're going to have a date night at the movies. So I have um, a membership to a movie club at one of the theaters, which means mm -hmm. I get like free tickets and discounts on popcorn or whatever. So right. I go online and I get our Oppenheimer tickets. It's, three, it's, a, it's more than three hours long, by the way. Let me just say, Oppenheimer right. is a, it's a masterpiece. It's a very important film with amazing performances from shocking actors. You're like, oh my God, is that Josh Peck? Yeah, it's like Christopher Nolan casts his movies the way Christopher Nolan wants to with disregard for what anybody in Hollywood would think, which is why all the Christopher Nolan movies are filled with amazing performances. It's an important, important true story and a three plus hour movie. So we get to the theater, we get our popcorn. And um, there's about 25 minutes worth of previews, which I personally love. But, you know, the mister's getting a little bit agitated. And the movie finally starts. And, man, I'm not – I think everybody knows how it went. So it's not like uh, I'm worried about spoilers. But you should see movies for yourself without somebody giving away, like, a cool scene or whatever. The Killian Murphy as Robert Oppenheimer is amazing. Florence Pugh, like, what can you say? Anything she touches is gold. Emily Blunt is great. Matt Damon. Matt Damon really captures that sort of like um, comfortable, smooth military authority that does not even believe somebody would think to challenge it. You know that vibe? So good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen him in roles like that. I can't remember the off the top of my head, but I've seen him in roles like that. And he, he so just doesn't seem like the he's he looks like the guy next door, but there's something uh, a little bit nefarious. Yeah, about what he's so doing. good. Yeah. Um, this is Robert Downey Jr.'s movie, by the way. I know that mm -hmm. you've only heard about Killian Murphy playing Robert Oppenheimer and um, making himself emaciated to fit the part and all that. Uh, uh. This is Robert Downey Jr.'s movie, and he's unfreaking believable. The movie, there it goes. They're building the A-bomb. They're fighting over the H-bomb. They're working in the desert. They're scheming. They're, they're fooling around with each other's wives. They're doing math and then going to visit Einstein and then doing some more math. And then they, they all flop down, face down on the ground with welder goggles on some dirty-looking mattresses, and they test the bomb at Los Alamos. And um, then, then there's this like congressional hearing, and all these important things happen. And at the very climactic moment in the movie where you're about to find out how all the chips fell for J. Robert Oppenheimer. The power went out and the movie stopped and they made us all go home. No. <laughs> you are kidding me. And I no, don't no, know. No. After three hours, I don't know how the movie Oppenheimer ended. Because the power went out. Do you know how much of the movie was left, y'all? Seven minutes. The power went out seven oh. minutes before it ended. And in case you're wondering, yeah, but girl, what could happen in the last seven minutes of the movie? The whole freaking point of the movie happens right. in the last seven minutes of the movie. So, you know those AT&T commercials with that really, really um, beautiful brown-haired girl, Lily? Yeah, Her yeah. doppelganger works for this movie theater into the darkness where people are like screaming and yelling at the screen, right? Here they send in the doppelganger <laughs> for AT&T Lily. And she's like, you guys, I'm super sorry. Like the power went out and you all have to leave. Um, I'm really, I'm really, I I'm so sorry. And, and she, and she's backing slowly away because there's a theater full of people going, you've got to be kidding. It's nobody's fault. It's a storm. So we all got um, tickets to come back and see it again. Um, show of hands, who thinks I'm going to get Kevin back into that theater? No way. Just for the <laughs> no, last seven you minutes, didn't of Oppenheimer. Have to ask. You didn't have to ask. I mean, I guess you could 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 you get your seat and then go in like the last half hour? I, I could, but I'm, yeah. we we all know what's going to happen. 
it's going to come to HBO Max or Amazon Prime or whatever. One of the streamers will get it. Yeah, Movies yeah. on demand. We will put it on and we will watch mm-hmm. the last seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Because it was based on a true story, I kind of sort of know how it went. But just as the power went out, um, because we had picture before we lost sound. So first we lost sound and then we lost picture. Just as the sound went out, um, Einstein was about to deliver some important message to Robert Oppenheimer about his, I don't know, his soul or his legacy or what they were serving in the cafeteria. I don't know. 